How are you? Uh, excellent. Thank you so much for coming out tonight uh, for the SAG Foundation Q&A with the cast of Trophy Wife. My name is Jarrett Weisselman. I'm the editorial director for ET Online. And if I wasn't up here, thank you. No, that's, <laughs> if I wasn't up here tonight, I would definitely be in the audience because this is hands down my favorite new comedy of the fall season. It's got so much heart. It's so sweet and funny. And this cast, I mean, I don't know how you assemble a cast of this caliber for I don't know, anything beyond like a star set of telethon. So without further ado, please let me introduce the amazing actors who bring Trophy Life to life. First up, we have Natalie Morales, who plays Meg. <laughs> Followed by Bailey Madison, who is Hillary. Ryan Lee, who plays Warren. And Albert Tsai, who plays Bert. And then we have Bradley Whitford. <laughs> and then I'm proud to introduce Bradley Whitford, who plays Pete. Malin Ackerman, who plays Kate. Michaela Watkins, who plays Jackie. And Marsha Gay Harden, who plays Diane. Thanks for coming, guys. Nice to see you all. Mom, I'm going to start with you, because in addition to being a star of the show, you're also an executive producer on the show. Can you talk a little bit about the genesis of Trophy Wife, the idea, and how you sort of began rounding out the cast? No. <laughs> Okay, good night, everybody. Good thing your name's not Mom. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is obviously an incredible cast, and still all of us uh, who were involved in casting it are still a little bit, we still pinch ourselves and can't believe it, but um, it was, it was, it was uh, the writers, the creators, um, Sarah Haskins and Emily Halpern, um, who's Sarah's life, this is sort of based on her life, um, which is awesome to hear some of her stories. Uh, some of the stories are actually stories that you kind of go, well, we can't do that because no one will believe that that really happened. <laughs> um, but, but they handed me the script, and uh, I saw the title and did not want to do it. <laughs> Didn't want to play a trophy wife, and then I read the script and went, oh, wow, but she really actually has some dimensions, and it's not exactly what meets the eye. And, you know, so um, talked about it uh, and, and really just kind of fell in love with the creators and, and the other producers and um, sort of broached the subject with ABC and said, hey, how would you guys feel if I came in creatively as a producer and uh, and tried to help put this thing together because that would be really fun and, and amazing as an actor to be able to have a little bit of say in something that you're creating. Um, and they agreed. And so we went out and started the casting process and I swear to you, every single person who's sitting up here is so, so special, which I don't have to say because I know you know, but it really was the, the people who came in for auditions, you know, um, it was just, there, there was nobody else. Like, every single one of you just shone, and it was like, oh, that, that is our, you know, that is our Jackie, and that is our Bert, and that, it was, it was clear as day. So that was really cool to have that, that happen. And then we have Bradley and Marsha, who don't need to audition, because we know they're <laughs> freaking great. <laughs> um, and could not believe that these amazing actors were really interested in the script, and I think it just goes to show a lot about the writers and the material, and um, that it's really super fun. So, absolutely, it's a really long-winded answer. I'm sorry. No, please don't apologize, Marsha. Let me ask because prior to this, a lot of your TV experience had clearly been in other comedies like Damages and Law and Order: Special Victims Unit. <laughs> you know, real, real funny light stuff. Uh, what was it? Were you looking to do a comedy, or was just you could not say no to this character in the show? I wasn't sure it was a comedy until I saw that Bradley Whitford was going to be in the cast. <laughs> And then I understood. Um, 
absolutely I wanted to do a comedy and I love the whole idea of doing a half hour and I'm a mom I've got three kids and it's a as you guys know it's a great great life I mean it's still like 12 14 hour days but you can still go home and do homework and you don't work every day and the script was funny and the character was a kind of a bitch I mean not only I could say that because I think she's fantastic I'm sorry I didn't realize there was a young person in the audience <laughs> no, she totally just had whiplash she's like <laughs> I'm so sorry okay let's take two um, <laughs> no, Diane is this wonderful, controlling kind of um, achiever, and she's fun to play, and they let me have kind of long, sexy hair and have fun with it, and, and that's, what else do you need? Extensions. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that you sort of pause when you saw a child in the audience, but because there are also three children behind you. <laughs> We're but, just used to it. They're yeah. so used to it. Yeah, no, but that's what, but they, like there also language. is, I mean, as from an audience perspective, there's like a unexpected Sorry, it's just maturity. that Albert is a 75-year-old uh, man. And a, he's Billy. The he's wise Benjamin, soul. Benjamin Button. Is kind of, <laughs> Albert, but, can, can you no. just tell us your favorite time in history again? What were you telling me back there? Because his favorite subject is history. What's your? F My favorite time in history is, in British history, is the Victorian to Edwardian era. Of course. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's mine for sure. He's yeah. heard it all before. <laughs> but teaches I mean, us a lot. She does. Marsha gives us, I will say, aside oh, from yes. that, from the second language teaching that we hear every day, um, she gives us <laughs> fabulous <laughs> history lessons. And I go in and I'll just spend time in the hair and makeup room for like an hour and a half and, and just hear these beautiful stories that are just so elaborate and, and just take you to a whole different world. So She's she a does Cleopatric teach us a lot. fanatic. Yeah, it's crazy. Marsha is kind of living history. <laughs> <laughs> we love each other, guys. These two the are like of the really child like is a laughing too couple. hard right now. Okay. <laughs> oh my! I've, I've lost control, and it's ten minutes. No, but you know, Marsha, it's interesting because there is a maturity to these three young actors that I feel like you don't see a lot in younger actors. There's no precociousness in their performances. I mean, are you as you know, the parental roles surprised by the maturity these three bring to these performances. First of all, I sort of love that you'd let me be the parental role. I know these two ladies are like, whoa, we show up. <laughs> of course, Brad doesn't even flinch. Um, I, I love these guys. I love them so much that we just had our Thanksgiving break and I totally rented an RV and invited them to come with me to go skiing because, um, and we did. Um, they're not precocious. They're, they do the work. They research the characters. They uh, try anything that the directors ask of them. They're smart. They're fun. They're easy. And if, if you don't have that, I mean, you guys know it can be a nightmare when you have little kids that are like, all they want to do is like talk about their managers and their agents. You want to strangle them. <laughs> right? Absolutely. I mean, Billy and Ryan, I feel like actors who are like four times your age would be envious of your resumes at this point. <laughs> I Thank mean, you. what is it like, what was it about this show that appealed to you guys? Do you want me to go first? Go for it, yeah. uh, thank you. Um, I, it's funny. I never, I never thought about doing TV, and it was kind of um, something that just popped up. And um, and I was taking meetings with all sorts of different networks, and then found myself in the ABC kind of building, and just wanted to thank them for everything they've done for me with once. And then um, found myself walking out of that with a meeting, and then found myself meeting the incredible creators and the producers, and then found myself on a plane reading the script and falling in love with it. And it was the fact that it was, um, especially at the age that I'm at right now, it's like you can either go from a 13, 14 year old to an 18 year old, or you can play someone who's your character. And that was something that I really loved about it. And of course, I'm a huge fan of the proposal, so I was fangirling when I saw that. <laughs> um, but no, I love the people and I love the script and it was something different for me. And um, I can honestly say I'm learning every single day to be able to you know, learn the comedic timing and, and, and these people have just taught me so much and I'm so grateful and I love the show and I love the experience. And um, I, uh, I'm very grateful for that one meeting that I walked through the door for. Yeah, what about you, Ryan? Um, you know, sometimes good. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. I was going to say, sometimes good things, you know, you know, fall in your path that you weren't expecting. That was deep. Yeah, so deep. See how my voice got all serious? Football. Yeah, <laughs> football. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it's just, I was auditioning and uh, Mon was in the room. And I don't know for for that <laughs> fourteen year old that's boy. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I was auditioning there. She was. That was it. Was done. And she's my mom. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, getting to come to set with her every day, so. No, I'm just <laughs> um, no I just, I, I, uh, the, the fact that the character is so, um, you know, he was so happy and um, he is he so is happy. glass half full. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I'm exactly like that. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, Very relatable. Enthusiastic. And I don't know, just yeah. getting to um, sort of play yourself. I mean, maybe a, maybe a um, what's the word, more, more heightened version of yourself? Mm -hmm. I guess that's... Uh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was fun. You guys are 15 episodes, I mean, in your production schedule, you're on episode 15. You're 15 yeah. episodes into your first season, and there's an insane vibe going on with the eight of you. I mean, Bradley, as someone who's worked in various television shows and films before, is this rare to have this kind of camaraderie this quickly with a production? Uh, I, I, you know, yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> um, there are happy sets and there are complicated sets and there are septic sets. <laughs> uh, this is a very happy set. Um, uh, the the, the grown-ups are grateful, the, the kids are grateful and humble. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a really happy, uh, wonderful place to work. Yeah. Has it gotten to the place that, Ryan, you were sort of touching upon this, at a certain point when the hist in the life of a show, the writers will start to pull from who the actors are and building out those characters. Have you guys gone far enough into the show where you're seeing things that you've talked about with the writers get yeah, reflected yeah. in the script? Shut up, punk. Yeah. I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, like, uh, like, Natalie's had experiences. Um, yeah, uh, I, t I told one of the writers about it. Uh, the worst date I'd ever been on, and they put it in the script. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I went on a date with a guy, oh, uh, who every every time he um, agreed with me about anything that I said, mind you, he was just interviewing me the entire time. It was just questions, which was strange to begin with. Every time I agreed with him, he'd bring go, it bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> and I'd, I was like, do I have to fist bump you? Like, uh, by the third one, I was like, no. <laughs> No, and he just kept doing it, and they, they put that in a script. I can't remember who said it. Is it Tevin that says it? I, I can't remember. It. You I say it. Oh, I yeah, you say it. Yeah. 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 Just, we should take a second. Bring it in, yeah. Also, to, to thank our creator, Emily yeah. Haskins. I mean, Sarah Haskins. <laughs> Are they here? I'm mixing them together, guys. Sarah and it's Emily. It's the thought that counts, guys. Are they here? I don't see them. She's right oh. over there. She wouldn't come up. Yeah. yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah, Woo! Woo She's back there. We love and you guys. Lee and Jean are back. Yeah, Lee and Jean. Yeah, Jean. Jean. It's funny too. It. I feel like I feel like they're watching me as like an awkward teenager, and they're like, "Oh, so that's what every awkward teenager does do." You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's, so it's, it's fun for me to get to. Do I just part. also want to point out that Jackie and Michaela are exactly the same, right? <laughs> exactly. It's She's crazy. so good at Reiki. It's just Reiki. <laughs> um, not true. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for. Pointing out some similarities. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, you obviously have a large background in improvisational comedy. I mean, how much does that get used in the show, and how much of it is flexing a different muscle for you? Um, you know, not really that. I mean, believe it or not, not that much. I, I think, uh, you know, the writers are incredible. I mean, all the funny, the funniest lines are, are there. So um, every once in a while, you know, maybe like things get paraphrased or inverted, or like some, some line will pop out. Um, but it's only, if that happens, it's only because it was inspired by what the writers had going. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, the writing staff is truly like it, A++, plus plus. you know? I mean, that is another thing that, just with the casting, I know that when they were picking their writers, they got all their first choices, and, and um, yay, 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 yay us. <laughs> we benefit from that, so they make us look good. Absolutely. You know, but I think one of the other great joys you get in a first season show with an ensemble this large is watching all the different character permutations evolve. I mean, when you have, like, Meg and, you know, Albert's character in the pilot episode, and then Jackie and Albert's, I mean, there really are, it must be really fun for you guys to find and explore those kinds of relationships as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about that, Albert? <laughs> well, I think it's a really um, nice cast, and um, we've all um, helped each other and supported each other, and it started to feel like a family. It 
Really Albert's helped me in school. school. He does. It's funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> he helps all of us at school. I'll be writing a report, and he'll come up to me and go, what? You forgot the period. No. No, it, it, for, in hey, history, it's too. R, in eight. history. <laughs> Albert and knows all like, of our lines. If anybody's like, what line is that? He'll today say we it all before anybody else tells yeah, us. He's like, cool. oh, your line is this. He'll come from another room and be like, this is your line. <laughs> <laughs> like, pop out. And every once in a while, I'm like, okay, my OPEC stack is getting really high. And he's like, if it gets two points higher, sell. <laughs> She's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Albert, you are quickly becoming America's sweetheart. You know this, right? I mean, it's... Thank it, you. <laughs> it's astounding. And I mean, it really is a testament, I think, to the combination of what they give you to do and what you do with it. I mean, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? I um, wanted uh, to be an actor when I was seven years old and I did a school play and I liked it. So um, I asked my parents to sign me up for lessons. And then um, I joined a um, convention called IPOP. And uh, that's where I f found my agent and my manager. And then um, my agent submitted me for Trophy Wife. And then um, I went in for the audition. And I, um, they liked me, so I c came for the callback. And then I met the producers at the final screen test, and a few days later, I knew I got the role. Yeah. His first, first TV role. Pretty awesome. Well, Thank I mean, you. W was it strange for you to be on the other side of the audition process with this show? It was exciting. It yeah. was really fun. Um, I love to go around and say that I'm producing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but it, it, it really, uh, it, was, it was really exciting to be on the other side and watch these actors and kind of imagine what it would be like. And I, I would read with them at, at the screen test just to feel the chemistry. And that's always so much fun to be part of that process, but also to be the one on the side who's already got the job. Right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> much yeah, it's much better. Um, but it, but it was it's been a, an incredible time and really to be able to be a part of you know watching the real producers and showrunners and creators and how they work and and it's been a great learning process for me and extremely exciting when you know we get we get to cast the people that we really love yeah. and people like you know award winning actors want to do this show it's kind of amazing. I mean, I've been doing these SAG panels for a while, and I've yet to find a single actor who will say they enjoy the audition process. Oh. Well, <laughs> I, I of mean, Brett, Brett. I loved, I loved this one. Yeah, because I mean, nope. and they let us because yeah. I read, yeah. I, I came in with you, and I yeah. remember, I just remember this the other day. I was in the waiting room, and um, I was, I, did you quit before I tell the story? Did you get sick after you met me? <laughs> Just a question. I didn't, I didn't vomit when you no, left but like, did, no, no, <laughs> like after I left you, like you I didn't get, like, me. did you like get like a fever? Or I don't, I don't Great, remember. so I didn't get you sick. So <laughs> I, I was walking, I was walking through my turn to my mom, and I was like, do I have a fever? And I guess, and then after the audition or whatever, I like, I was burning up or whatever. So I was walking in there, I was like sick as a dog, and I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to be sick in front of you guys. But I remember I read with her the first time, and then the second time they left it open for improv. And um, and that to me is like the one moment that you can kind of find out if you can like when you really can trust someone. You know what I mean? Because you're just kind of letting loose and having fun. And I'll never forget walking out of the room and turning to my mom and going, "She was just so nice to me." And it was just so you know it was so much fun. And I and I sat in the car and my mom looked over to me. I was in the front seat and um, and I was saying my line still. And mom goes, "Bailey, Bailey, it's done. Like you can't fix it. Like you were in the room. You already did it. Like what's in there was in there." I was like. Yeah, 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 okay. And I just like kept on doing it. Um, but that one, that one's my favorite. It's this just, one was because it was fun. Yeah, it's just the auditioning process. The worst thing about it is the stress. You know, after you get out of the room, did I get it? Didn't, what did I do wrong? What could I have fixed? And in this one, you didn't have that. You know what I mean? I mean, you walked out of it. I think for you walked out of it. I was so I mean, stressed we went, out. We went back like <laughs> six, six times or something, but it was, but it was just every time I would walk out of the room, I'd just be like, that was just fun. I don't, even if I didn't get it, I. I did. I, I met Mullen Ackerman. <laughs> I like how in the audition process and like whenever you're waiting for any kind of, I'm assuming most people here are actors probably, I, that, that um, 
you, the way it works for me, some people just like, it sort of flows. Like they audition and before they get in their car, they get a call and they're like, oh, <laughs> I, I booked it, fabulous. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then for a lot of people like me, it's like, you hear nothing, it's radio silence, you've given up all hope. <laughs> you're not suicidal, but you're like trying to think if you have other skills. And then, and then you have a moment of like, I don't care, I'm free. <laughs> and then the phone rings. And then you get it. And you're I'm like, with oh. Michaela, yes. <laughs> that was it. That was so it. It's like you waited until I didn't give a crap anymore. <laughs> Thanks. There was a moment, like a minute earlier, where I would have rejoiced like crazy. But, but you <laughs> broke me, and then now I'm putting myself back together. <laughs> so that's, that's the fun kind. I, I have to say, I, I so hate auditioning. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I just, I hate it with all my heart. I have like two goals in my life. One is to never audition, and the other is to die in a single room. A single room? I, I just don't want Speak another little family more there. Breath. I just want to be alone. Oh, like a hospital, like a single no, bed I feel, in a hospital. I, I, I feel like people, I hate people who audition well. Because they're, they're like, it's like dogs at a dog pound. If you're reacting normally to being like taken off the street and you're put in a cage and then you have to be chosen, <laughs> you should be snarling in the back, like pooping. And, uh. But who do they pick? The oblivious idiot up front. I think it's a nasty skill and a nasty thing, and it should be avoided. <laughs> but, I mean, clearly, <laughs> you're good enough at it to have been cast in, like, 14 of my favorite television shows Not and, like, 15 good. of my favorite films. I mean, do you, what tips have you learned over the years to get through this horrible puppy pound process? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> you you just uh, you just gotta think it's a weird, different skill that you have to be good at that has nothing to do with your real talent. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm bored. I don't know. I, I I just I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. We got it. We got it. I'm still wondering about the single bed. Like why want to tie in a single no, room? No single room. Yeah, I'd love well, a double that's, bed, that's but a great. single room. <laughs> I just don't want another family there. When I was waiting tables, uh, Phyllis, D I waited on Phyllis Diller, and she said, "Are you an actress?" And I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "Oh, you'll like this. I went to a cattle call audition today." And I said, "Oh," and she goes, "The cow got the part." <laughs> That's that, exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I, I mean, honestly, auditioning is, is I, I, I'm sure you, you guys, it. I really hate it. And I don't respect people who are good at it. I really don't. I mean, I'm terrified to ask Marsha if she's good at it now, but I am curious what your I'm feelings are. I'm genius at it. <laughs> I'm a sublime auditioner, <laughs> and I enjoy every moment of discovery. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> uh, you know, the thing is, sometimes I like to audition because if you get the part and you haven't auditioned, then you wonder, what the hell am I going to do when I go into the room because I didn't get to try out anything, and now I just have to figure out what to do, and they didn't already guide me or tell me or give me any boundaries, so now I just have to go in there and flop around for a while and try different things, but if I'd have auditioned and they liked what I did in the audition, at least I would know the direction that I'm going in when I walk into the room and what the character is, and they would have maybe even directed me a little bit in the audition, that would have been really good because then I would have really known what to do so this there's i mean listen it's glorious to not have to brad i agree <laughs> especially if you're terrible at it brad but um 
<laughs> when you're good like me, it does serve a purpose. But, <laughs> but it's, it does, it actually does. It's now a good time, you know, Marsha's <laughs> assistant uh, has her Oscar, which she will bring in later. <laughs> M Meryl? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brett, one of the great things that the wives sort of illuminated about your character are sort of a lot of the choices he's made throughout his life. When you look at the three women he's chosen to marry, and particularly the order he's chosen to marry them in, yeah. it's dizzying. <laughs> I mean, but that has to be sort of informative for you when you're actually building him. It's building him? <laughs> it's kind of an <laughs> emotional spin painting. Uh, I, 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 you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's funny because I, f I, I feel like it's sort of like ex-wives of the Caribbean. You know, it's like, oh, they don't go away. Uh, and and actually, I'm actually sort of struggling with this as an actor because I feel like... Whew, Lots of times, I, I, I just feel like Pete needs to just, oh, don't react. <laughs> Which is a funny thing uh, for a character to play. <laughs> they probably make it very difficult for him to be so stoic. Yes, yeah, no, um, it, it, it's, it, it really is uh, a joy to have all these <laughs> ex-wives. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to ask uh, an audience question from Ashlyn Boots, and she wants, this is for everyone in the cast, uh, if you could be or play any other character on the show for a day, who would you like to play and why? <laughs> Jackie. 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 Is that no, just no. the general consensus? No, no. Yeah, but I kind, of, I kind of get to be you because we're so much alike, so then I couldn't choose you. Because we're, because our think I'd like to play Bert, and I got you today a little bit. Well, yeah, see, Ching Aida. That was the line of mine today. <laughs> it means me too, sweetheart. There she goes showing off again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, isn't she accomplished? <laughs> what about you, Natalie? What was Jack your line today? Oh, yeah, you weren't in it today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely Jackie. Uh, it's, I love, but I could never do it justice like Michaela could. No, I mean, okay. there's literally no one who could do that as well. I can't get through a read-through without losing it at one of her lines. I can't. It's impossible. She's, it's just <laughs> so yeah. good. It's not linear thinking. <laughs> A lot of people are like, well, how were these two ever married? But if you met my parents, you'd say the exact same thing. And you are somewhat like my father. And this Jackie is a lot like my mother. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> and um, this has been very healing for me. <laughs> what for you... Michaela, what was the key to finding Jackie's in the performance? I don't, you know, I swear, I've never met, I didn't meet Sarah or Emily before, but when I read the script, I immediately was like, got it, I understand. I connect those two ideas too, even though, why would you? Even it's, though you've never connected two ideas before in your life. <laughs> I do, you're just, you're not on the journey with me, man. <laughs> It's just, there's a whole, Jackie is a complex system. There's a whole matrix going on up there. And, you know, it's not linear thinking, like you said, but it's, there's a lot of, you know, catalysts that are firing, and they just happen to be all at the same time. So, I get it. Michaela did say one day that, that she realized, because people would say, how, how are you guys ever married? And her, <laughs> her answer was that uh, since the marriage, uh, Jackie's had a terrible accident. <laughs> <laughs> was that you? That was oh, that was Paul. There, 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 there was some sort of concussion. <laughs> I love it. But I mean, I think in particular, when you get Jackie and Bert together, there's like a special kind of magic that happens there. I mean, w and the two of you as actors seem to play really well off one another. I mean, what is it like... At, and yeah, what is it like for the two of you sort of filming those two-handers? You're, you're just talking about 
Yeah, Jack. You can... Oh, I, it's like, um, it doesn't feel like acting with Bert at all. It just feels like we're just hanging out. It really does. Um, he is, it's, you're just such, he's such a natural actor and um, I have such affection for him. So I, 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 it's just, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What do you think? And Michaela, you're like really nice to me and you're <laughs> so fun to play with. Thank you. <laughs> So cute. I mean, have you ever in your life seen <laughs> anyone cuter than this guy? No. He picked out that hat. Mullen, of all the easy choices when Albert came in to audition for Bert, was that one of the easiest? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was, he was, may I? No. He was, uh, I, ju uh, I just, I love Albert so much, so much, and I think everybody does, but he came in and was so, he's such a professional, did an amazing audition, blew us all away because it, it, he, he's just, as you see, I mean, he's just really unique in the way he delivers lines, and, um, but after the audition, he pulled up his pants underneath his chest and just said, I just want to thank you all for having me in and giving me this opportunity to come in for you and read for you today. And then took off. And we just all melted when this little boy, who was so eloquent and so talented, it was, I mean, there wasn't really much to talk about. It was incredible. Because you were sort of there from the beginning. Have any of these characters changed or evolved because of the actors you've chosen for them? Yeah, uh, Pete became less funny mm -hmm. when we got Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, takes him a while to get words out. <clears throat> Good for comedic timing. Uh, <laughs> no, of course they, ha they have, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, anytime writers get their hands on actors, it, it sort of, they get inspired by the actors and vice versa, and um, it becomes sort of a marriage. I mean, if the writers are smart, which ours really are, and the creators, and you kind of take in all the different talents of each person, and, and truly, you know, Jackie is such a unique character as well, and Mikhail has done such a fabulous job with her in making her uh, real in, in this quirky world because it could be so out there but I think there have been a lot of things that Michaela has done in table reads and whatnot that have inspired her care I mean yeah for each and every one there has been a shift and a change and Natalie was supposed to be my sister in the initial script which um, didn't quite we work. don't really look alike yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's what yeah we were supposed say. to be I mean, yeah I think we look alike we were supposed to <laughs> We were supposed to be sisters, and in the like what you were talking about before in the audition process, especially with Malin being there, uh, the sides were still. Uh, I think one of my lines was like, "Listen to me, I'm your sister," and they were still that. And I went in there, and I didn't know she was going to be in there, and I was like, "Oh, she's so pretty in real life." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, I'm way more nervous now." And I read it, and I said something really dumb, where I like changed the lines to like. Listen to me, I'm your very good looking Latin friend. And I just like <laughs> changed it somehow in a very awkward way. But yeah, that, that changed, obviously. I'm not her sister anymore. <laughs> what do you think the show gains from that, though? Because I feel like, in a way, there's almost so much family. It's nice to have someone who's removed from it in a completely different way. Yeah, I think that it's nice to see uh, Kate's background, mm -hmm. like where she came from. And, and, sort of who she would have been had she not married Pete, <laughs> in a way, you know, like who she would have been like or like what she would have been doing still, you know? And I think that probably Kate was always the more mature, more handled one, but I think the fact that I'm not her sister means she chose me, not that she was stuck with me. So she, she continues to choose me to be her friend rather than just somebody she has to put up with, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as we sort of touched upon, there's obviously a lot of comedy to be had, but there's also like a lot of great family components to this except show. For <laughs> except, except for Bradley Whitford. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, the family is kind of amazing the way it's built, and as we've sort of seen the relationships between, you know, Kate and Diane and all the other characters evolve, and one of the audience uh, questions really dealt with Kate and Hillary and sort of the evolution of that relationship. Obviously, it's changed a lot from what it was in the beginning. Can you guys talk a little bit about how that sort of became what it is now? Do we like each other? 
Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Getting closer. Slowly but surely. We try. <laughs> She's a little manipulative, I think. Uh, I think Kate wholeheartedly is really trying to be a cool. It's it's so hard to come in as a stepmom in any, you know, to be a parent to somebody else's kids, especially when they're teenagers. And God, I would have been a, uh, a horrible person <laughs> as a teenager with, this, you know, I was. <laughs> um, I have a stepmom. I was really, really mean to her at first. Gave her a really hard time. Um, but, uh, but I think that, you know, it is hopefully going to evolve in, in trying to be buddies instead of, uh, I just think that, you know, for her having Diane as a mother, I really am like 10% of what Diane is. So, uh, it, it's just kind of like, there's no point really in asking me what she thinks I'm not as smart as Diane. <clears throat> Uh, but I, but I do think I do feel like what we're going for is eventually, you know, a nice camaraderie and I that we become that. friends. And um, I don't know. I mean, that's more. Of, we'll see what the writers are writing. That's that, that's sort of their creation. But that's always been the idea: is that at the end of the day, everyone sort of finds a way to get along and, and live together. Yeah, I mean, because Billy, I mean, she really does have these two polar opposites, sort of. Yeah in her life to go from like, you know, having horrific French lessons with Diane to what, whatever's happening with Kate, you know? Yeah. I mean, can you talk a little bit about striking the balance? Um, I, I think it's a lot of fun because Hillary is kind of torn between, I think, the girl that she wants to be. I feel like she's um, always looked up to her mother and has always wanted to be, you know, the very precise, like has her future laid out, wants to be the smartest and the best and everything. And then I think she looks at Kate and she's like, she always has fun with what she's doing. You know what I mean? She let loose, she lets loose, she has fun. Um, but I, I think it's always interesting for me to kind of watch Hillary grow script by script, you know, is she, is she becoming her mother or, or is she not wanting to be with Kate? I feel like there's a part of her that, that does, but then, um, but then she keeps on finding herself going back to her old ways, you know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's really exciting for me, it, like everyone said, I mean, the writing is so beautifully done and, and, um, and so funny and, and then they're able to hear, kind of handle a character and kind of make her grow and, and make her be able to relate to tons of girls out there, which is something really, really exciting for me and, and different and, and new. Um, but I would love to get to see them become friends. I, I, someone on Twitter actually wrote like if they got stuck somewhere, like stuck in an elevator or like they had to like bond over kind of like some kind of subject or some kind of boy and, and then um, once the situation is done, like she just walks out and she's like, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like then she goes back to being, you know, her mom's right. best friend. Um, but I don't know. I, I love them both, and, and I'm still learning kind of with her. So I'd love to get to see that relationship go farther. You, you bring up an interesting uh, point, though, is the importance of social media in a television show now. I mean, you know, Crazy. you have hundreds of thousands of Twitter followers. Uh, but I'm curious for... <laughs> I mentioned thank that to you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm curious for... He was making fun of my followers no, today. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Let's no. explain that, Ryan Lee. Yeah, uh, no. Curious yeah. for the older crowd? Is that what you are yeah. about to say? Well, I was curious gonna, for the... Yeah. I was going to say, I was curious for... It's for you, Brett. For yeah. Bradley and Marsha, yeah. because this oh, is the first great. time... <gasps> you doing great. Twitter? I, 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 I cornered him in the makeup we, room. We all, of, <laughs> all of us were talking. We were like, Brad needs to get a Twitter. Like, he needs to. And so I cornered him. He was about to go in makeup. I was like, yo, Brad! Not like that, because that would be disrespectful. But I was like, hey, <laughs> hi, Brad. Hey, and then, <laughs> hello, Mr. Whitford. I love your shoes. <laughs> no, no, but um, I cornered him, and I was like, I turned to him, I was like, do you want our show to stay on air? And he was like, yes. I was like, do you want us to trend? He was like, yes. I was like, get a Twitter. I will run it for you if I need to. He was like, yeah, okay, fine, fine, I'll get one. But then but he goes, thank you. Then he goes, what, is, what does trend mean? No. <laughs> no, he tweeted that. He tweeted that. It was so funny. But um, he's like, oh my God, he has like 20,000 followers. He's been on for like, like four weeks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, two like days. a fake character he played is like one of the most popular <laughs> accounts on Twitter. <laughs> Who's run by who? Who is that? Is that just I some have, random I, fan? I, I, have, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no idea. It's Jared. <laughs> I, I, on, honestly, like it's 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 very weird to me because, I mean, uh, why anybody would want to in the middle of their day say, "Wow, this chili I had was really great," <laughs> but it's different. Doesn't occur to me. Um, and and for a couple of years, <laughs> you like do. I have a friend who's who's like, who's a producer who said that the, not for principal parts, but for like day players in movies, 
this terrified me that like casting agents like look at how many followers they do yeah. that's crazy they do. <laughs> uh, that's crazy um, they do they and they look and see how much you social like mm -hmm. how much you tweak to yeah. help them out it's well, crazy uh, you know I guess it's it's free publicity in this um, Crazy world. It hurts your thumbs. I need like some kind of splint. I told, I turned to my mom yesterday. I was like, I think I broke my thumbs. <laughs> I was like, she's like, can you move it? I was like, yes, but it hurts. <laughs> so I'm going to Walgreens when we end tonight. Okay. I'm gonna go get one of those popsicles and like make a popsicle splint or whatever you call it. You like with the two wooden ABC things. Pay for it. Marcia, you've been <laughs> live tweeting a lot of the episodes. I mean, what has. has that that kind of interaction with the fan? I mean, is that the upside to the social media is that you do get direct contact with the people who are obsessed Have you, you talked to the person you hired to tweet? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm probably it's horrible to say this in this room, but I, I don't do it. I'm so completely not interested in it. I would rather watch the show with my kids at night and laugh. And when uh, a couple times I tried to do it myself. And I was such a, what I said before, um, <laughs> I was a monster because someone would say something and I was trying to tweet and I'd be like, I miss, I miss the joke, I miss the joke! I was so <laughs> upset that I, and I didn't enjoy it and I <laughs> hate it and I'm not interested in what I had for chili for anybody to know. So I don't See, but do I it, hate, but I hired I hate somebody Twitter too. Does Why does it? she seem cooler? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> she, you won. No. Um, <laughs> The thing is, I did hire someone to do it, and she's really good at it, and she's young, and she has really great language for it, and I don't have that good skill. Good thumbs, too. But, <laughs> but honestly, I believe that talent will out. I do believe that. I think, at the end of the day, you could have 500 Twitter followers or 5,000 Twitter followers, and if you're a sucky actor, you're a sucky actor. And I believe that if you go in and you, you look at the character and you try to make a difference with the role and you connect to it, I believe that's what counts. I believe that's what the writers are looking for. I believe that that is what Malin and the directors and everybody are looking for. And the other stuff helps. But that is called social media, and it is not called acting, and it is not called the art of it. And so you shouldn't do one for the other. That's one thing I think. Well, anyway, that's what I think. But I, I, I honestly, I, and, and I'm not joking around, it has changed. And in this world where the networks do not know what the hell they are doing in terms of launching shows, it's scary now. Nobody knows how to launch a show, and I think in certain ways they're saying, well, do this, you know, we've seen it work, you know, in certain areas, you know, maybe this, you know, will solve uh, the problem of so many different choices that people have now to view. And Marsha's stupid. <laughs> okay, but you're talking about launching, you're not talking about an actor walking in a room. So no, no, no. And, I, and that's right, there's all kinds of things. Although, if I could tweet my auditions, I'd be all for it. Bradley, Bradley, what do you hate more, auditioning or Twitter? Auditioning. Auditioning. <laughs> or people on your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, I'm going to, we're going to close with sort of another group question because, you know, we do have a room full of actors here and we do have some amazing actors on this stage right now. So. I would uh, love if each of you, if there's like a piece of acting advice you've learned over the years that, or you've been given from an acting teacher or a colleague, if there's anything you'd wanted to share in terms of advice. I, I, I actually have something which goes totally against everything that I've said about auditioning, which is, it, it, but it, it, it's still because I hate auditioning. Uh, treat audition, I, I found as a schmuck in New, in New York, that I going in expecting because it was probably going to happen that it was not going to turn out well but if I treated it like it was going to be the only real acting experience I could have with that material it became a productive experience rather than an emotionally debilitating one and I would actually over prepare um, and I think that that uh, that helped me because I w it, it sort of took it out of their hands. I was like walking in the room, going, you know, fuck you. This, you know, this is going to be my only experience with this. Sorry, like, I'm sorry for swearing. <laughs> uh, I 
I don't know. I don't know if I have any great advice at all. I mean, I think everyone's so different in the way that they approach things. Uh, I, I I can only just say, you know, preparation is really key. And I used to kind of laugh at that and just went, I'm going to wing it when I get in there. And then you wing it, and you, by your hundredth audition that you didn't get, you go, maybe I should not wing it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should just like prepare it and treat it as a real job and focus. And really, truly, that is that has just been key is you prepare the crap out of all the material that you have, whichever way it is that you prepare. And then you go in the room, and you have fun with it, and you let it all go. And, you know, and truly being on the other side as well. And, and people used to always say, don't take it personal if you don't get the job. And of course you take it personal because you're vulnerable and you're putting yourself out there. But, uh, but being on the other side and having been able to audition other people, there are so many great actors. It's just that sometimes that one person walks in and before they even open their mouth, you go, that's the guy. And so that's when I went, yeah, you really can't take it personal because we actually could have chosen three, four great actors, but this one was just the character. And so that's, that's really nice to remember as you go in, that even if you get the no, you, you, it doesn't mean that you're shitty. I mean, you could be, but uh, <laughs> you'll never know. <laughs> but, but most of the time, really, truly, I think that's the one thing that made it easier to go on and, and be able to face the everyday grind of getting those no's where you go, ah, that's okay, you know, it just, it wasn't my part. So... Uh, I totally agree. And, you know, I went to one of those acting conservatories for, for my undergrad, and, and it was, well, I only went to undergrad, and I don't know why I said undergrad. I never went to grad. <laughs> Some people do, I didn't. Um, but it was a conservatory, and it prepared me not at all for, for acting in Los Angeles, um, because unless I was going to play a 90-year-old in Grapes of Wrath, I did not have uh, any of the skills. So um, one, of the best thing, <laughs> one of the best things that I, I... The thing about conservatory is you're always told you're not enough. Like, you don't sound right, or you're not walking right with your shoulders back. And, you know, all those things are true. And you can come out as some homogenized actor who looks and sounds like everybody else. Or you can come to L.A. and do specifically only what you do. And I had this great acting coach, Ian Tucker, who teaches here in L.A. And, um, you know, I took an audition class with him. And I just will never forget when he said, stop being a moving target, and I don't, I'm going to paraphrase, this is not at all how he said it, but it was something along the lines of, you know, just if you stay your course and you are you and you, you harness everything that is unique about you and you stop trying to be other people and other things all the time, eventually, you know, a lot of cars, you stand in the middle of the highway, a lot of cars are going to go by you, but if you keep trying to move to get in front of the other cars, you're a moving target, just be you, do what you do. Nobody else can sound, talk, act, or say the words at all like you will. And eventually, <laughs> the bus is going to hit you. I don't, <laughs> like, again, I'm not sure if that was how he said it. But, <laughs> but I took that to mean that, um, you know, to stop trying to sound like other people. And if you have a unique thing about you, it's like, instead of trying to get away from it, own it. Which is why you went and did Saturday Night Live and were several other different people. Shut up. Why don't you shut up ever? <laughs> I had the same um, advice from a teacher. He said, you are enough. You are enough. And I thought, that's not true. I need a wig. I need an accent. I needed this. I'm boring. And he said, you are enough. So that was, I agree with Michaela. The other thing I was just thinking is um, uh, don't play the condition. Play. Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, she make um, don't play the condition, you know, it's not about the person being drunk, it's about what's underneath it, the pain or whatever, what's underneath it. So, um, oftentimes in an audition they give you these extraordinary situations or extreme situations where the character is, and just remember what's underneath it, the core that's underneath it is, as the teacher said, and it's somewhat true, is, is love. And whatever the manifestations are, we all want that love. So I think, for instance, for Diane, she may be all these things that I can use adjectives to describe her in funny ways, but it, for me, at the core, she's a mother. And she loves her kids, and that's what she is. And so everything that I do, and because it's a show called Trophy Wife, and it's about family, everything is ultimately about the kids and the well-being of the kids, and uh, a search for 
I love that she lost <coughs> Brad. Um, <laughs> And doesn't want back. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, you're enough, and don't play the condition. Look for the core. Yeah. Oh, you guys have it. Yeah. You got around. <laughs> Albert, you want to go? Okay. Um, one piece of advice that I learned is always believe in yourself. That's a good advice. No. Yeah. I like Don't that. Like that Um, I, I mean, you guys are, you just nailed it, uh, but I guess I've, I've, oh, I've almost been doing this, I think, for 10 years now, and um, it definitely, I know, I look like I'm 12, but I'm 17. Seven. He can, he can drive. Where did that come from? Yeah, he drives. He drives. Uh, um, and, you know, there's definitely the opportunities that you don't want to take. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, you know, you know, pick and choose, but, but I, what I'm saying is, I did a, uh, I did a, a movie a couple years back called Super 8, and, just name drop it. He reminds me every day of that you know, movie that he did. And, um, and for that auditioning process, they use a fake script. And, um, I, I guess my friend, my friend wanted me to go to Florida, and I had the audition, and, uh, the, the, the fake script was... You know, it wasn't very good. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't, you know, dr written by JJ or anything. It was just sides. And it was about a kid doing math homework. And I was like, Mom, come on. I want to go to Tampa with my friends. You know, come on. Let me. And she was like, Ryan, you, you know, you made your commitment. You know, you've, you've, you've promised that you'll do this. And I was like, all right, you, I guess you're right. Yeah, that's fine. And, um, I mean, it ended up being super eight. So when you, when you... I know, it, it is crazy. I could, could have gone to Tampa and <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be here right now. That's how crazy it is. Uh, but, I mean, I've, I've done 20 college films and I guess the best classroom is, is on set. You know what I mean? So, it just take, take, yeah. You've always <laughs> take all your opportunities. Yeah, and it, I, I think it's great when you, you know, you're a stand-in, you're an extra. I've been, I've done it all, and so when you you start from the bottom, you get an appreciation for everyone on set, you know, and um, people who have to get you water. It's just, you know, it's just. Oh my God! I, I, no, 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 true watch, story, watch. true story, true story. Okay. It's just, yeah, go, yeah, for, yeah please. No, because no, we were talking one night, um, I, I'm, I'm, our, our moms were there. And it was actually during the Christmas episode. We had just yeah, wrapped yeah. the Christmas episode. And my mom came up to me in the kitchen and said, did I hear that you asked someone for water? And I said, no, 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 I didn't, I swear. And Lisa, and, and Lisa turned to Ryan, Ryan, did you ask someone for water? No, mom, no, no, <laughs> no. No, mom, we didn't do it. And it's so funny because we've been, I mean, we've, we've, We've kind of been raised in, you know, in this business, but we've been raised by our parents who have, who have told us, you know what I mean, you're, you're never too good to get your own water, and you're never yes, too good to, yes. you know what I mean? It's you all have those legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's all those things, and it's really funny. <laughs> and we stay, um, and, it, and it's ways to keep you grounded. But what if but those it, legs are on an ottoman, just like relaxing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can. Yeah. We have the, we have the, we have these. But um, it's funny. Um, the one. I, did I interrupt? No, no, I was, sure? I was done. Okay. No, I was done. <laughs> Are you sure? I was done. Okay. Go for it. Um, the one, the one thing that I would say to you has it has nothing to do with the acting standpoint of it, but it's something. Um, when I worked with Katie Holmes, she was always on that set, and I and I say this in my story all the time, but I, I mean it every time that I say it. Um. There was truly not one person that she didn't say hello to in the morning, and not one person that she didn't say goodnight to. And it's hard if you know, it's hard to thank the entire. That's you know, my my point of that is even if you can't thank everyone, it's the point of saying hello, how are you, how is how is your Thanksgiving weekend? You know what I mean? And and connecting yeah. with your crew members and being someone other than an actor and and really just becoming friends and being respectful to all of them. And and that's something that I've learned is. Um, you're never too good to stop at, at crafty and, and talk to them and, and just hear how their day is or how their son. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, just being just being happy. No, no matter how big or small the project even is. Even if you're in super. Eight. <laughs> 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 um, I have two pieces of advice from what I've learned thus far in my storied career. Uh, <laughs> the first one applies to life in general, and this has done me well. Uh, 
things can be intimidating, especially like in audition rooms or meeting people or whatever. It, it, it's uh, nerve wracking, you know, and, it, and it's weird and you feel like Marsha was saying, sort of like maybe you're not enough or, or you're, you know, it's, it's, it's nervous. This is my one advice that applies for life. No one is as cool as you think they are. <laughs> No one, <laughs> not even Beyonce. Nobody <laughs> is that well, cool. Yeah, on. she got oh, her hands stuck in a yeah. fan. I promise you, whoever you're intimidated by is a total dork in their own life, and 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 it really helps when you think about stuff that way. Um, my second piece of advice is. Uh, it comes from a lot of, I mean, it can blend into a lot of phases. Uh, don't take advice from people who aren't working. Uh, <laughs> people love to give advice in this town. Even like your, your parents' friends who don't know the business at all. When you go home from Thanksgiving, they're like, so anything on the horizon? Uh, I heard that this was going on. Well, maybe you can try it. Like, yeah, everyone tries to give you advice. Uh, don't take any unless you respect what they're doing and they're working consistently and, or even if they, I mean you know if they're retired okay if they, like, if they had a career I just mean like somebody that is doing stuff I went to a conservatory like well a place that thought they were a conservatory like like Michaela in Florida and two years in I was like why am I learning acting from people who are teaching it in Florida what like this makes no sense so, yeah, you know, like, if you want to be good at what you're doing and if you want to take advice from someone, take advice from someone who's doing it well, not from some guy who thinks you should be doing this, you know? Take this class, do this. No, you don't know. <laughs> like, don't let them blur your focus because that can happen. So, yeah. Awesome. That was good. Oh. Well, on that note, guys, thank you so much for all being here thank tonight. You. Thank you to everyone for coming out and listening to the SAG Foundation and to ABC and have a lovely evening.